Life's a dream, I wake up in Miami, walk over to the beach, and then send the drone up, check it out. We pick up Ethan and make the one and a half hour drive north to Palm Beach for a day of luxury. First stop is Restoration Hardware. We then head over to the marina to check out some multi-million dollar yachts. Hermes is next and we may be in our 20s, but don't tell Ethan that. Side note, you guys don't even want to know how much this thing costs. Florida is known for their manatees and Palm Beach has a lagoon where they all hang out. Pretty neat. We then continue the day of luxury by heading over to the Breakers Hotel, which costs a cool 2K a night. Check it out. We can't help ourselves when we find a basketball court on property and I finally get a chance to back up all the Chicago Bulls gears I always wear. <laughs> oh no. Oh, guys. <laughs> oh. I believe I can fly. The sun goes down which means it's time for poker. We head over to the Palm Beach Kennel Club to see some flops. We're into the 2-5 game for $500. First hand of the night, I looked down at ace queen of clubs from the low jack. I have a cool 500 in my stack and under the gun raises it up to $15. Three bet incoming, it's $45 if he wants to play, which he does. He puts in the call and we're off to a flop with nearly $100 in the pot, which gives us a nut flush draw comes jack 5-5 five, five with two clubs. The opponent checks it over to me in flow. And even though the board is paired, I do have the nut flush draw and two over cards. So I'm going to represent that as well as all the jacks in my range with a $35 bet. Not expecting him to fold too often and that's exactly what he does. He puts in the call for 35 bucks, and we're off to the turn which doesn't give us any help. It comes the eight of hearts. When he checks it over to me for a second time, I could go for a pot size bet here. Really polarizing and putting a lot of pressure on his one pair type hands. That's not what I do. I'm still getting settled into this game and I check behind which brings a six of diamonds on the river and now under the gun leads out for $55. Would he be doing this with a club draw? I'm not too sure. It's more likely a jack that's going for thin value or maybe even an eight. For that reason, I just decide to muck my cards and live to fight another day and we look down at king nine of spades from the button. The action folds back around to me and I raise it up to $15. Our good buddy Ethan is at this table with us. He's in the small blind and he doesn't play for $15 too often. He he makes it 60 bucks in this hand. I'm in position and I'm against Ethan. How could I find a better spot? Of course I put in the additional 45 bucks and we're off to a flop which gives us top pair. King Jack 3 with two clubs. Ethan fires out for $40. Need I say more? Obviously never folding. Could I be raising here? It's possible I could get value from any club draws as well as Queen 10, Ace Queen, things with a gutter. But in the moment I decide to toss in 8 red chips and we're off to the turn with 200 in there which gives us trips. It comes the King of Hearts. Ethan doesn't slow down on this card. He bets out for $80. It's likely he thinks I called him on the flop with a draw because when the king comes on the turn, it's less likely I'll have one. But unbeknownst to him, I do in fact have a king in my hand. So obviously I'm putting in the call for 80 bucks. That's a cheap price and we're off to the river. When the river comes a 10 of diamonds, it's not exactly the best card because now ace queen gets there on a flush and paired board with ace queen. So when he rips it all in for 250, I've seen enough of his punts. He's gotten me before at the Mandalay Bay as well as the win. When I have a good hand, I'm done folding to Ethan. I put in the call for 250. And sure enough, he turns over a ram punt, queen five of hearts. I'm going to scoop down that $865 pot and we're up $350 early on the session. Real quickly, if you guys are new here or if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. It definitely motivates me to put out more content for you guys. Let's get back into the hands. Next hand, we look down at the beautiful ace king of diamonds from the big blind. Ethan is in the straddle. He puts out 10 bucks and there's five callers over to me. I'm definitely not putting in 10 bucks here. I make it $75 looking to go heads up and isolate an opponent. Ethan's on my direct left and he decides to make it $200 now. The action folds back around to me. What a crazy spot. He's in the straddle. He probably thinks I'm doing this pretty wide here from the big blind. So when I have a premium like ace king of diamonds, there's nothing for me to do other than rip it all in over 
over his $200 raise. I have him covered. I put in $550 and he snap calls. Hopefully he has queens or jacks here. Aces or kings would definitely not be a good sight to see. We both turn over our cards and he turns over pocket jacks, a good old fashioned flip. There may be six other people at this table, but as of right now, it's just me and Ethan battling it back and forth. Let's see if we can get him in the second hand. Gonna need to see an ace or a king on the flop and that's exactly what comes king nine eight bang we flop top pair life's going pretty swimmingly he's gonna need to hit a jack or some backdoor draws and the ten of spades on the turn is definitely a card that brings in a lot of draws from him he's now open-ended and the seven of spades on the river now improves him to a straight pretty gross spot and it's not exactly a small pot either eleven hundred dollars is the damage and it doesn't take him too long for him to needle me because you made fun of me <laughs> We meet a cool vlog watcher named Alex, of course he's cool with a name like that, and he buys Ethan and myself a beer. With some liquid courage in us, we finally get invited to the private 510 uncapped game. I ended up getting out of that 2-5 game for a loss of almost $300, and now I'm in the 510 game for $2,200. What's Ethan in for? Oh, I don't know, maybe a cool $10,000 hoping both the boys can run up a big stack here. We look down at the first hand with 2200 in my stack, ace king jack with two clubs. Why do I have three cards? Oh, we're playing crazy pineapple, double board crazy pineapple in fact, and here come the flops. First board comes jack eight four giving us top top, and the second board comes eight six deuce, all clubs. <laughs> We flop a flush. Pretty great flop on both boards, I must say. And there's $150 out there in the middle. In Crazy Pineapple, you have to discard a card. Obviously, I'm going to get rid of the King of Hearts. The action checks over to the cutoff, who bets out for $75. I probably should just be putting in the call, but given the fact I'm not too experienced in any of these PLO or Crazy Pineapple hands, I decide to go for a value right now, considering we're pretty deep. And I raise him up to a conservative $250. Fortunately, everybody else and himself folds. We're still going to take down that first crazy pineapple pot of the night and no complaints for me i'm up 225 dollars early what up, baby? Oh, 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 Next hand, we look down at the ladies, pocket queens from the cutoff, and middle position opens it up to $25. The low jack puts in the call, and obviously I'm going to raise it up here with a hand as strong as pocket queens. I make it $100. Only the low jack puts in the call. We're going heads up to the flop. Sitting around $2,400 effective, the flop comes ace, eight, five, all spades. Not exactly the best board and overcard to our queens, but we do have the queen of spades in our hand for what that's worth. The low jack checks it over to me, and on monotone boards, I'm usually going to be checking behind that's what i do and another black card peels off on the turn this time it's the four of clubs and the low jack now leads out for 75 dollars when i check back the flop and the fact that i have the queen of spades in my hand my hand is too strong to fold just yet i toss in three green chips and we're off to the river which gives us the flush comes the three of spades and now the low jack slows down and checks if he had the king of spades in his hand he'd probably bet here not wanting it to get checked behind so i think this is a green light for me to go for a small bit of value i bet out for six $65. I'm targeting any sets, two pairs, flop flushes that just can't get away for one last bet. So when I put in the $65, he puts in the call. I turn over my hand and uh, he mocks. $545 coming our way and we're up almost $500 in this 510 session. Let's go. Okay, enough folding. We have $27.50 in our stack. Life's going pretty swimmingly, and we look down at Queen Jack offsuit from the cutoff. One limp over to me. I put in the call. Ethan's in the small blind, and he calls, and the big blind checks. We're going four ways to a flop. Flop comes King 10 7, giving us the open ended straight draw, and the action checks over to me. I'm going to start representing all my strong hands. Considering I just have Queen high and some draws, I bet out for $35. Ethan now goes for the check raised $145. Actions back over over to me and I've seen him do some crazy things earlier in the 2-5 session so I'm not folding my open-ended straight draw even though there's two spades on board for $110 more I put in the call let's spike an ace or a nine on the turn 330 out there and the turn card is about as bad as it gets it comes a six of spades but Ethan now decides to slow down and check not exactly sure why he's checking here might have been going for the check where he's bluff although I expect most of his bluffs to have some amount of equity here even though I have a bluff myself so I decide to check behind I still have the queen of spades in my hand, so maybe another spade on the river will give us the pot, but the five of hearts on the river is not exactly the card we wanted to see. We're left with just queen high. Ethan checks it over to me for a second time. Do I check behind with my queen high, or do I try to get him off some one pair or maybe some ace high holdings? I think that's the better play. 
In hindsight though, my story doesn't really make too much sense. When I bet call the flop and then check behind on the turn, I'd probably be betting on the turn with any of my spade draws, but I fire out regardless for $230, taking a play out of Ethan's book and putting a little bit of pressure on our good buddy. Unfortunately though, he was trapping me. He snap calls 230. He was never folding there to a bet. And he turns over king 10 offsuit for flop two pair. I guess he was a little bit scared of the spade on the turn, just like I was. A good check by him on the river gets him another $230. The money between us is just going back and forth but I'm having a lot of fun and I'm having more fun when I look down at pocket aces from the button as if life couldn't get any better the $25 straddle is on and the hijack puts in the call how could it get any better oh I don't know if the cutoff now raises it up to $75 and the actions back over to me I'm on the button there's a straddle a call a cutoff raise obviously I need to build the size of the pot and get some of these players out of here so we're not going four ways to a flop I make it $210 when I make it $210 I only really expect the cutoff to put in the call here, but that's not what happens. Let's see who calls. Oh, the small blind, the big blind, the hijack, and the cutoff all call. How is this even possible? I have aces now in a five-way hand. It's $1,000 in the pot, and the flop comes queen, jack, four, rainbow. I have the benefit of position. I'm on the button, and the small blind now rips it all in for $400. He starts the action. The big blind puts in the call, and the action's back over to me. I really would like to just get out of the way here, but I don't think the small blind is ripping it in too strong. The big blind's call, though, is very strong. So I'm not going to be raising here. I'm also not going to be folding. I put in $480. And let's see what the turn card brings in. Other than an ace, a four of clubs might be the best card for us, counterfeiting any queen jack holdings. But the king of hearts is not that card in the actions on the big blind. He has around $1,600 left in his stack, and I have him covered. And he just decides to rip it all in for $1,600. If he didn't have us beat on the flop, this king of hearts probably brings in any of the draws he was doing this with. Most obvious being 10-9 of hearts or spades. Aces at this point is just a bluff catcher, so I fold it face up. We're going to see the run out in this $2,400 pot. When the river comes the eight of spades, the big blind turns over pocket kings. We had him crushed. How didn't he go for the five bet preflop? I would have just ripped it in and we would have got stacked. His decision to just call my four bet preflop with aces saves me about $1,600, but he's gonna take down that $2,500 pot. Feels like a win though, I saved a bunch of chips. After making a great fold with pocket aces, we look down at ace eight of hearts from the small blind. Ethan in the plus one position raises it up to $40 and the cutoff and the button both call. With a suited ace here, I decide to get in the pot as well and the big blind does too. We're going five ways to a flop, which gives us an open-ended straight draw, an overcard, and a backdoor heart draw comes 10, 9, 7 with one heart. Surprisingly, in this five-way pot, the action gets checked around. There's $200 out there, and the turn is a great card for us. It gives us more outs. Comes the king of hearts. I'm in the small blind. I start with a check, and it checks over to the button, who now fires out for $225. When the button checked back the flop, and now the king of hearts comes on the turn, and he decides to bet, he either could be doing this with some draws, or he could be doing this with a king. I decide to go for a check raise here to $700. If I'm gonna be doing this with some strong hands, I also need to be doing this with some weak hands like ace high flush draws. We also have the benefit of hitting any jack or six to giving us a straight. So I like my decision to go for $700 here, putting pressure on the button. Let's see what he does. I would definitely just love a fold here and I can take down this pot but he decides to put in the call and we're off to a river in a $1,600 pot. This is definitely a sketchy situation. We need a heart, jack, or six. Maybe an ace would be good too, but a board pairing king has us feeling nauseous. I have around $800 in my stack and there's $1,600 out there. So if I rip it all in, he only needs to put in $800 to win $2,400. He's getting a decent price with any decent hand. I just decided to rip it all in though, $800. We're gonna just have to go for it with our ace high here and music to our ears he mucks his cards. We're going to take down that pot with ace high. I turn over my cards to show him the bluff. And he said I had the best hand. He had queen six of clubs. Calling my raise on the turn there with the queen high flush draw. Great news if I decided to check back. I would have just won that pot. But really happy I decided to rip it all in there on the river. I'm doing some new things here. Playing some power poker. And uh, we're feeling good in Florida. We look down at ace king offsuit. That's the next hand. I'm in the big blind. And the $40 button straddle is on. The small blind puts in the call. I raise it up 
up to $205. The button puts in the call and the small blind does as well. We're going three ways out of position to a flop, which is definitely great news for us. A7-9 rainbow, $630 out there in the actions on the small blind. He checks it over to me. If you guys are long time vlog watchers, you know if I'm in between two opponents or monkey in the middle, I usually go for a check. The reason being the opponents are going to have a lot more sevens and nines in their range. So if the button puts in a bet here and the small blind then raises, I can confidently just get out of the hand, but that's not what happens. The button decides to check behind and the 10 of diamonds peels off on the turn. Small blind starts with a check. Obviously, I'm never checking a second time here on an ace high board. So I bet out a little less than half pot for $265, which scares the button out of the way. But the small blind now puts in the call. Could he have a draw here? Something with an eight in it, like seven, eight, nine, eight, maybe 10, eight. I'm not too sure, but with $1,200 out there, the river pairs the board, giving us two pair. It comes the 10 of spades actions on the small blind checks it over to me for a third time do i go for a bet of thin value or do i check behind here just looking to get to a showdown i'm a chicken i check behind with my pair of aces he says nothing so i just immediately turn over my cards i'm going to take down that 1200 dollars pot it looks like my river bet would not have got paid if i went for thin value but i think in the future i should be going for value against any ace queen or ace jack type hands and getting another two to three hundred dollars out of the opponent <laughs> Let's jump right back into the action. I look down at pocket jacks, the Yannis, the Yigities, whatever you want to call it from the hijack. Ethan puts in the $100 button straddle. Yes, this game is definitely out of the muck. The low jack finds a call and the action's back over to me. Obviously, I'm never putting in 100 bucks here. What price would you guys make it here from the hijack? I decide on $475. Is this the hand you guys were waiting for? I think it is. Ethan now decides to re-raise to $1,500 out of the straddle and the action folds back around to me. I've noticed when Ethan's on the straddle and I've been doing some raising, he likes to do a lot of three betting with any of his strong hands, his suited broadways, his pocket pairs. So when he makes it $1,500, it's not necessarily Queens plus here. For that reason, I put in $475. He committed $1,500. Let's just put in the whole stack here, $2,600 going into the middle. And obviously, he's not going to fold for $1,100 more. Let's play a 5K pot with Ethan Rampage Poker. Ace Queen offsuit is what he has. He asked me how many times I want to run it, and I say twice. This is the biggest pot I've ever played in my life. Obviously, I'd love to scoop this pot, but against Ethan, I'm fine chopping as well. The first board comes Jack 4 5. Bang! We flop top set. Dealer, did I say once or twice? Oh, I guess I said twice. I wish I would have run it once. Until the eight of clubs comes off on the turn, he has the ace of clubs in his hand. Please, dealer, do not put a club out there. When I flop a set, we need to hold on this board. Luckily, we do. The nine of diamonds comes on the river. Let's see if we can see a clean board on the second one, but that's not what happens. He gives him two pair, ace, queen, six. Gonna need some help here. Any jack or maybe a king on the turn, which is exactly what comes the king of spades. Any 10 now would give us a straight, but it's not to be the river comes comes the seven of clubs. We're going to end up chopping that pot. Largest pot of my life and I'm happy it's against Ethan. No blood drawn here in this $5,300 pot. Not really sure how can we go up from there in the rest of this session. I look down at pocket fives from the hijack. Under the gun limps, I put in the call. The button puts in the call as well and the big blind checks. We're going four ways to a flop which comes queen five deuce. Bang! We flop middle set. A lot of bangs in the session here and the action checks over to me. I bet out for $30 and the under the gun puts in the call. We're going heads up to the turn, which comes the king of spades. Not a bad card because any of his king high flush draws that were floating on the flop now make top pair. And he's definitely going to get sticky with that. He checks it over to me for a second time and I go for value $125 over betting the pot. And now he jams all in for $450. Definitely a strange play. I snap call with my middle set. $1,000 pot here. We both turn over our cards. He turns over King Jack. He was floating us on the flop, although he didn't have a flush draw. It's King Jack offsuit. Let's see what the river card comes in. It comes the nine of spades. And we're going to hold in that $1,000 pot. Up $950 on the session. What a great night. And let's wrap it up with one last hand. I look down at pocket jacks. Are we going to play another huge pot here against Ethan with pocket jacks? Let's see. I'm on the button and Ethan sure enough straddles it up to $25. Middle position calls and another middle position player now raises it up to $50. I make a small C bet to 180. I probably should be going 250 plus in this game. And my point is proven when both middle position players put in the call, we're going three ways to the flop. With $595 out there, the flop comes king high, king 8-4 with two clubs and the action checks over to me. 
Against two other opponents and there's an overcard to my jacks, I just decided to check behind and let's see what the turn card brings in. No club on the turn would be groovy and that's exactly what comes with three of hearts actions on the first player. He checks it over to the second who decides to go for a bet now of $250. He's going to be doing this with his kings as well as any of his flush draws or sets. So when he bets out for $250 coupled with the fact I checked back the flop, I can't be folding here. That'd be a nitty play. I put in $250 of my own money and we're off to the river heads up. When the river comes a brick, it's the five of hearts. I guess he could have picked up some backdoor heart ideas on the turn and then river to flush, but it's more likely if he had a flush draw, it was the club variety. So now he goes for a $600 bet into the $1,100 pot and I'm in the tank. The only reason why I'm considering this is my flop check back. Could he just be blasting off here? Thinking it's unlikely I don't have a king in my hand. Yes, I think that's a huge possibility. I'm up in the session and I want to show some hospitality to our friends here that let us in this 5-10 game. So if he has a king, I'm going to pay him off and give him some money back. But if he doesn't, if he has a draw, we're going to take down a huge pot here. I put in $600. When I put in the money, he says I'm good. That's exactly what I want to hear. I turn over the pocket jacks. He looks at his cards one more time and mucks. He later said he had A6, so my flop check pack is going to win me that $2,800 pot. Absolute dream session sun run for your boy Wolf here. We got into the game for $2,200, out for $4,700, so a huge profit of $2,569. Our biggest win in Florida and our biggest pot ever played against our boy Ethan. Let's go. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.